Elden Ring is an amazing game, and the unique experiences we've all had give us our own opinion on what's truly the greatest build. Myself, your average gamer, has detailed my thoughts on the best build before, but there never is one that truly fits everything. That's the coolest part about Elden Ring, as each boss requires a different mindset with changes in resistances, damage, speed, and attack patterns. Which is why today I've re-ranked and revamped my best video to date with my top 20 broken builds, overpowered builds in Elden Ring post DLC. All footage is on New Game Plus 7. We're going to start here at number 20 with the Envoy's Longhorn. Also, later in the video, we're going to have another Elden Ring creator drop in like the first video. I honestly cannot wait for that. That's going to be really cool. And now we're going to talk about the Envoy's Longhorn, which is one of the few that's in the exact same spot as the first video. This weapon was nerfed before DLC, which resulted in a loss of its poise damage and some bubble damage. However, in the end, does it matter? It's still ridiculously good. Holy damage is great in DLC, and aside from Pest Threat Spears and Agent Dragon Lightning Strike, it's one of the best big target destroyers in the game. It is absolutely still good, doing massive holy damage at a reasonable FP cost. For this build, you'll want to level up Faith first, as the Ash scales entirely with Faith. Level Strength second, as that'll be the physical damage on the weapon. All right, in a second here, we're going to go over stats, equipment, everything you need to know for an awesome bubble build. One of my favorite weapons in the game, and it still is. We have the Envoy's Longhorn plus 10, of course. We have any seal here. The Urtree seal would be fitting if you're going to use some incantations. We have the Envoy's Crown on Rakshasa set. We have the Shard of Alexander. We have the Sacred Scorpion Charm. We have the Ritual Swords Talisman. We have the Ritual Shield Talisman as well in case we get hit. And then we have the Holy Tier and the Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 26 Endurance, 23 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 75 Faith with the Faith here. And then for our buffs for this build, we're going to be using Golden Vow for 15% more attack and defense, Blessings of the Earth Tree for some extra HP, and Halisher Brewery for 40% more damage. At number 19, we've got Repeating Thrust and or Blood Tax. These are both very similar. This is an awesome build that can do a lot of damage. They can both be built in the same way, as Repeating Thrust tends to do a little bit more physical damage, and Blood Tax can heal you with its hits. You may have noticed the background music, which I'm using for some of the bosses that don't have their own music or not much of their own music. Anyway, which one you use is going to be up to you ultimately. They're both really good in DLC. For the base game, I prefer repeating thrust for more physical damage. And for the DLC, I like the extra healing from blood tax. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Keen Cross Naginata with blood tax on it. Of course, we're using Blood Flame Blade. Any seal for buffs. We have the White Mask Rakshasa set. Rotwing Sword Insignia. Shard of Alexander. Lord of Blood's Exaltation. We have Melissa's Prosthesis. Thorny Tier. Faith Tier. And I was using Boiled Crab here again for extra defense. If you've seen my recent New Game Plus 7 build videos, I've been using Boiled Crab a lot for the extra defense and DLC. I highly recommend it. It's great. Or Black Flames Protection. We have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 20 Endurance, 75 Dexterity, 25 Faith with the Faith tier. Then we're going to be using Golden Vow, Blessing Spoon for extra HP, and then Blood Flame Blade to give us a total of 90 Bleed. At number 18, we have the Claws of Night. So I didn't expect this weapon to initially make this list, but hear me out. This is a very quick innate bleed weapon with good damage. These are notably fast with high DPS, and on top of that, the Ash of War is FB friendly and comes out fast too. They're one of the most convenient weapons to build around the DLC, and running a pure dexterity build will net you a lot of physical damage and some magic damage. The selling point, though, is bleed. The blood loss is the important factor here. With the low amount on the weapon, it's surprising what you can get with the Ash of War in combination with very quick attacks with the Claws. This can combine for an easier time against tough bosses and make for an outstanding dexterity weapon to build around. It gets a B in dexterity scaling and it gets a lot of physical damage and some magic damage off of that B in dexterity. This is definitely one you'll want to have. You can get this from a late game quest line. There's an NPC that will invade you and these are certainly worth picking up, no question about it. If you're going to run a dexterity build, you need to try out the Claws of Night. If for anything else, use the Ash of War at a range. It can stun some enemies and it does good bleed build up too. Elden Ring truly is an amazing game and having this ability to go in and use all these different builds and have a ton of variety, I recommend trying out several of these, no question. The Claws of Night, though, are super fun for me. In a second here, we're going to go over equipment and stats. 
And we have the Calls of Night plus 10, preferably. We have any seal you could use for buffs. We have the White Mask and the Rakshasa set on, of course. We have the Ritual Sword Salisman at full HP for the Ash and the Shard of Alexander for that as well. Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier, and we're using Boiled Crab again. All right, let's jump into stats for this build. We are going to have 60 Vigor, of course, 22 Mind, 28 Endurance, 16 Strength, 75 Dexterity, 25 Faith with a Faith here, and we're gonna be using Golden Val, Blessing Spoon, and of course, as we mentioned, our body buff will be Boiled Crab for defense. At number 17, we have the Star Fist. There's a reason why you see so many speedrunners using these. They're good. These would be even higher if I weren't ranking these on New Game Plus 7, which is the max base game difficulty. Poise increases by 30%, which will happen even with your first DLC run with New Game Plus 7 scaling. The only thing later that will add on to it is DLC Plus, which will add some more damage in boss HP one last time. The poise though on these modes is very difficult to rely on, so instead I mix the heavy charged attacks with bleed builds up and light hits of course to make sure that I get as much bleed as I can as percentage damage is huge on max scaling. Keep in mind, the average boss poise will be around 120, which will be around 160 on New Game Plus 7, and some bosses that have 150, like Elden Beast and Concert Radon, will have nearly 200. Let's jump into equipment and stats. For equipment, we have the Heavy Star Fist. We have Endure on it, of course, we're using any seal for buffs. We have the White Mask and Rakshasa set on. We have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. We have Melissa's Prosthesis. We have the Axe Talisman. We have Lord of Blood's Exaltation. We have the Spike Crack tier. Fates here, and we're using Boil Crab again for defense. And let's jump into stats real quick for this awesome build. We're going to be strength focused here. We have 75 strength, 60 vigor, 19 mind, 30 endurance, 25 faith with the faith here. And then we're going to be using Endure a lot. That's going to give you some extra defense when you use your Ash of War, and you can take more hits with that. And then we're going to be using Golden Vow, Blessings Boon, and then of course Blood Flame Blade, which will give you 85 bleed, and with Endure, you can get a lot of hits in. At number 16, we have a favorite on this list, and that is Spinning Strikes. It's one of the few base game bosses I took on because I wanted to show this awesome clip where I absolutely destroyed the Draconic Tree Sentinel on New Game Plus 7. Spinning Strikes is incredible, does a ton of bleed buildup and physical damage, and since Spinning Weapon was nerfed, Spinning Strikes, by no question for me, is without a doubt now the best one. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Heavy Grave Scythe with Spinning Strikes, we're using Blood Flame Blade. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, any seal for buffs though. White Mask, Rakshasa Set, Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Listen's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. For stats, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 30 Endurance, 70 Strength. This is a Strength build. We're using Heavy Affinity, 18 Dexterity with Melissa's Prosthesis, 25 Faith with the Faith Tier. You need 10 Arcane, by the way, to use Blood Flame Blade. And of course, we hit over 51 poise for most of these. We're going to be using Golden Val. Flame Grammy Strength will give you 20% more physical and fire damage. And then we have Blood Flame Blade, of course, to give us around 95 bleed buildup. And number 15, we have Bleed and Frost. For this, I chose the Gargoyle's Twin Blades. Bleed and Frost is really good, although Bleed and Bleed is a direct upgrade. Why choose Bleed and Frost then? For me, it's always been about more fun to see if I can hit that Frost proc and then get a bleed proc after. If you do this, you'll see a massive amount of damage taken off the boss's HP. This is an impressive feat that can see the boss phase quicker and also is a cool way of going about bleed with style. The frost debuff will add to your successive attack damage as well. Chilling Mist is a perfect complement to Seppuku. This is what I recommend for taking on Elden Ring's toughest bosses while changing it up from the typical bleed and bleed. Make sure you have a good amount of strength as well as arcane. At higher levels, you can put some points into intelligence too for more damage. Keep in mind, you'll get a little bit of damage from some extra intelligence on your cold affinity gargoyle twin blade. This is definitely a build to check out and a highly recommended one by me. I enjoy Bleed and Frost a lot. Goes well with the Gargoyle Twin Blades. Another one that I like with Bleed and Frost is the Godskin Peelers. I like them a lot too. They're really easy to hit with. They have a decent amount of length as well, and they do a lot of damage also with Seppuku and Chili Mist. I do get beat up a lot in this clip here against uh, Mesmer because Mesmer is really challenging on New Game Plus 7. Pretty much all the bosses are. This was on New Game Plus 7 with DLC Plus, and most of these are on New Game Plus 7. Some of the clips are with DLC Plus as well, which adds more. 
And of course, he's going to hit me a lot. And every time you heal, I feel like in the DLC, you're almost hit every time. It's almost pointless healing because you heal and then whatever moveset they have tends to hit you as you're healing. Maybe it's just me or I feel like every single boss in this DLC is pretty much anti-heal. By the way, in the state of transparency, I did use some clips from other videos to make this video. This video was a long time coming, though. I always wanted to redo that original video after DLC, and it's finally here. I'm happy to do this one, honestly. It's a lot of fun doing these list videos, too, and doing my finalized ranking. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Gargoyles Blood Twin Blade with Seppuku. We have a Cold Affinity Chili Mist Gargoyle Twin Blade. Any seal for buffs. You can check out our armor set there. We have the White Mask Raptors Black Feathers. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia Claw Talisman. Dragon Crash Great Shield Talisman for New Game Plus 7 is great. Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Then we have the Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. We're going to be using Boiled Crab as well for some defense as our body buff. Let's jump into stats for this one. For stats, we have 60 Vigor, 15 Mind, 32 Endurance, we have 40 Strength, we have 45 Arcade, 15 Faith, that's going to be 25 Faith with the Faith tier, and then for our buffs, we're using Golden Vow, Blessings Boon, and of course, Boiled Crab for defense. At number 14, we have Wild Strikes. Wild Strikes is very good with Rusted Anchor. This is particularly great given the fact that you could do successive attack damage with Pierce. Pierce damage is amazing in DLC, as most bosses have little resistances against it. I highly recommend this build for building up quick damage, and in Blood Affinity, you get some percentage damage off the boss's HP as well. The average boss HP on New Game Plus 7 with DLC Plus in Shadow of the Earth Tree is around 55 to 60,000, which is quite literally as insane as it sounds. That's right, the majority of bosses have more than two New Game Plus 7 Elden Beasts worth of HP, which is absolutely insane. So crazy to think about that, how much damage these bosses can take and how much damage they can dish out on New Game Plus 7. Let's jump into equipment. And we have the Blood Rusted Anchor with Wild Strikes, of course. We have the Dragon Community Seal, any silver buffs, you check out our armor set there. We have the White Mask, and the part of the Tree Sentinel set is what we're using. Melissa's Prosthesis, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Dragon Crest, Great Shield, Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier, and then we have Boiled Prawn, but Boiled Crab is better. I think I just didn't have any Boiled Crab left for this fight. And we have 60 Vigor, 19 Mind, 31 Endurance, 40 Strength, that's going to be 60 when we're two-handing this, 17 Dexterity, 25 Faith, the Faith tier, 45 Arcane, we're using Golden Vow, Blessings Boon, Boiled Crab, and I had Rot Breath, but I wasn't using it. At number 13, we've got the Fire Knight's Greatsword. This is such a cool weapon. It has extra fire damage and an amazing B in Flame Art. This allows you to use fire to its best ability, as Faith and Fire is always a great combination. High AR, good poise damage, and a solid ash like flame spear. This is a build well worth running if you're looking for some of the best faith builds in Elden Ring. I have no doubt this is a reliable one for the base game and DLC, even on New Game Plus 7, which we are on here. If a boss is fire resistant, consider going for a holy damage build, which is also great for DLC and you wouldn't need to respect. On another note, remember that flame spear has very good range. It's also chargeable as well. This is an amazing combination. Flame Skewer is pretty good too, but for me, Flame Spear is going to be better for New Game Plus 7 because of the fact that you have that extra range, you have the extra ability to charge it for even more damage, and if you are going for a little bit of posture damage, you're going to get more out of this one too. For those that are wondering why I may have said New Game Plus 7 a lot, there's a reason why, because New Game Plus 7, especially with DLC Plus, is ridiculous in DLC. If you haven't tried it yet, I recommend trying it. It's absolutely crazy how much damage they do. If you're on base New Game or even New Game Plus and use any of these builds, they're going to be even more powerful. And we're going to defeat the tree here shortly after a couple moves. And then we're going to go over a build for the Fire Knight's Greatsword. With that extra fire damage, by the way, you're going to have around 950 AR at rune level 150. Or if at higher levels, that you can probably get that number over 1,000, which is pretty crazy. Let's go over equipment, stats, everything you need to know. And we have the Fire Knight's Greatsword in Flame Art Affinity with Flame Spear on this. And we have the Earth Tree Seal. We have part of the Rakshasa set and the Winged Serpent Helm on. We have the Godfrey Icon, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm. Then we have the Flame Tier, Faith Tier, and we're using Boiled Crab for defense. By the way, if you're running the Fire Scorpion Charm, you take a little extra damage, you can make up for that with Dragon Crest. We have 18 Strength, 22 Dexterity, we have 70 Faith, we have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 31 Endurance, Golden Vow, and Blessings Boon. 
And number 12, Bloodfiend's Arm falls outside the top 10. Bloodfiend's Arm at Craigblade barely breaks anything on New Game Plus 7, so I use Savage Lion's Claw instead. Unfortunately, the nerfs to Craigblade long ago make it nearly useless on max scaling, adding only 10% more poise damage. The poise breaking tier only lasts 30 seconds, leaving little room for getting a break. Savage Lion's Call still can break, but it does more bleed build up and it has great hyper armor as well. As long as we're on New Game Plus 7 and boss's average poise is well past 150, this is one that's way more OP on base game and New Game Plus. Still, it hits hard with Savage Lion's Call and the bleed build up on it is excellent. It is, truly is an incredible weapon. It just falls off a little bit as you get to the later journeys. If you're on base new game and new game plus, I recommend going for Blood Affinity with Craig Blade. You can use the stance breaking tier if you want, but for me, it's a little bit too in terms of the duration. It's a little bit too short, around 30 seconds. By the way, if you're watching this full video, I'm curious by the end of it, if you get towards the end of this video, what your favorite build on here is and what your favorite build for Elden Ring as a whole is, I'm always curious on this list, what build you use the most. You don't have to write out the whole thing or anything. You could just say what your favorite weapon is even. I'm curious as to that. If I'm missing any of the popular weapons in DLC you guys like using or stuff I haven't covered yet that you want to see. Yeah, if there's something that I haven't gone over yet in Elden Ring or the DLC, be sure to comment. We have Blood Fiend's Arm, Blood Affinity with Savage Lion's Claw. We're using Drag Communion Seal. Check out the armor set here. We have the White Mask. We have 51 Poise. Two-Handed Sword Talisman, Shard of Alexander. We have Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation. We have the Green Burst Crystal tier, Faith tier, and then we have Boiled Crab as well. And by the way, I want to mention too that for this build specifically, I know the two-handed sword talisman doesn't affect Savage Lion's Call, but any regular hits are going to get that benefit. 60 Vigor, 19 Mine, 31 Durance, 40 Strength, 60 Room 2 in it, 45 Arcane, Golden Vow, Blessing Spoon, and Boiled Crab. It's Pastor Gaines here, and Matt was kind enough to let me drop in here on this video and run through this build with you. So, this build is going to be a massive fire damage build using two Giant's Flame Seals and charging as much damage as possible into Burn O Flame to absolutely decimate your enemies. Every single boss is going to be susceptible to this, especially if they're a bigger boss, because the more pillars of flame that hit the boss, the higher damage you are going to do. We're going to be buffing that fire damage as much as humanly possible, and because this incantation is chargeable, if you can get a full charge off, you're going to be absolutely leveling the bosses. Now, this incantation is going to deal 47 stance damage, and its FP cost has been reduced in previous patches down to 26, so for the amount of damage that you can pour out for 26 FP, this is definitely an awesome build and an amazing incantation to go with it. The only downside of using a spell like this is the fact that it's only optimized when it's fully charged, so you really have to choose your windows carefully in order to get all this damage off. As you can see from how we handled Romania Saint of the Bud, this was an absolute cakewalk, especially to sit there and burn her alive from afar. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see how the build works and jump into the equipment. We have two giant seals as well as the Flame of Frenzied sealed for our Flame of Frenzied incantation. We also have the Rakshasa armor set for extra overall damage. For your talismans, you'll have the Ritual Sword talisman, the Godfrey icon, the Fire Scorpion charm, as well as the Phlox Canvas talisman. For your flask, you'll have the Flame Shroud and Crack tier and the Faith Knot Crystal tier. And for your buffs, of course, we have Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. Now for stats, you're going to be rocking 60 Vigor, 24 Mind, 26 Endurance, 16 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 7 Intelligence, 80 Strength, and 11 Arcane to top it off. Awesome to have Pastor Gaines Games drop in for this video. After this video, be sure to check out his channel in the description below for awesome Elden Ring builds. At number 10, we have a tie that stayed between Agent Dragon Lightning Strike and Pest Thread Spears. Both these are very good for large targets and just okay for smaller ones. But when it comes to big bosses, Agent Dragon Lightning Strike can do 20 to 30,000 damage easily, while Pest Thread Spears can do massive damage over 10,000 or more and is a bit quicker to cast. These are great to combo together, and I highly recommend using something like the Erdtree Seal in the main hand for high scaling and a Gravelstone Seal in the off hand for the lightning boost. You could further burst Pest Thread Spears with the Jellyfish Shield too if you have 20 strength. These can make some of the bigger bosses significantly easier. Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike is really incredible, and honestly, if you want to complement the build even more, you could use Knight's Lightning Spear, add that in with the same exact build and setup for massive damage as well to hit some of the smaller targets, and even the bigger targets, it's a little bit quicker than Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. 
And as far as pest threat spears, there's really not a lot that compares directly with it. It's your physical damage option as a pure faith caster. It does pure physical damage. I believe it's something in the realm of pierce damage. It could be standard though, but it adds up to a lot and it is chargeable too now that we have pest threat spears. I also want to state that Agent Dragon Lightning Strike can be buffed like crazy, and Pest Red Spears can be too. So if you want to hyper buff stuff, they're both very good for that. If you really want to go through a minute or two buffing routine, you can one-shot bosses with Agent Dragon Lightning Strike and hit over 20,000 damage with Pest Red Spears. It should be noted, by the way, as a pure faith caster, you should have both of these on hand for a lot of situations, or at least a build for them, because if you're ever facing any of the bigger bosses, or bosses with a lot of HP, these are two of the best options out there to take them down as a faith caster. In a second here, we're going to go over equipment stats, everything you need to know for an awesome build around Pestred Spears and Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. Once again, I recommend trying this one out for sure. If you're struggling with any of the bigger bosses in the base game or the DLC, these are phenomenal options. Let's go into equipment, stats, everything you need to know for this awesome build. And for equipment, we have the Eritrea Seal plus 10. We have the Gravelstone Seal. We have the Jellyfish Shield too, which you could use for pest threats. We have Brock Shasta set on, Ritual Sword Talisman, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon, Flux Canvas Talisman, Lightning Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 21 Mind, 26 Endurance, 20 Strength, 80 Faith with the Faith Tier, 14 Dexterity. That's for the Jellyfish Shield. For our buffs, we're going to be using Golden Vow, Blessings Boon, Howlish Shabri for a lot of extra damage. And then, of course, we're going to be using Agent Dragon Lightning Strike and Pest Threat Spears. And number nine, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword, which has fallen out of the top five. This weapon is still good, especially given its insanely low FP cost. But when it lost its poise damage, that was a huge deal. And since the beams don't do a ton of frost from a range, you're relying mainly on magic damage. Luckily, the magic damage on the Dark Moon is quite good, really good actually, and is still a very viable and powerful weapon in Elden Ring's base game and Shadow of the Earth Tree as well. And yeah, I'm still going to recommend this weapon. It's still a very, very good weapon. Still top 10 for me. Still does massive magic damage. You don't have to charge it either. You can get decent damage from quickly casting it as well. Of course, you do get more damage if you charge it, but the low FP cost in combination with great damage keeps it inside the top 10. In a second here, we're going to go over equipment stats, everything you need to know. The Dark Moon Greatsword is absolutely worth picking up, and Ronnie's questline is one of the best quests in the entire game, so be sure to do that questline as well in the base game. By the way, that Solitude Armor set is great. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword plus 10. We have any Staff for Terra Magica, any Seal for buffs. We have part of the Rakshasa set and Spellblade set on. We have the Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword Talisman, Magic Tier, and Faith Tier 2. All right, let's jump into stats for this one. We have 50 Vigor, 22 Mind, 20 Endurance. We have 75 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith Tier, and the Reason Golden Vow, Blessing Spoon, Hallow Shabiri, Terra Magica. And number eight, we've got Ice Spear, which is a very reliable Ash of War and is incredibly easy to use. Ice Spear has both Dexterity and Intelligence scaling, so you can go for Magic, Cold, or Keen Affinity for great damage. Regardless of affinity, Ice Spear does Frost build up, pure magic damage, and 20 stance damage on each hit. You can also cast this very quickly, which is helpful in a lot of scenarios. Ice Spear is possibly my favorite Ash of War in all of Elden Ring, mainly because it's insanely resourceful and useful in almost all situations. Doing pure magic damage isn't a bad thing, and there's very few downsides to this Ash of War. The stance damage can also add up to a lot as well. It's honestly great. If you never tried Ice Spear, I recommend trying it out because if you're struggling in DLC, this is one of those ashes that's going to be incredibly helpful for you because of how fast you could spam it. The fact that it does between two and 4,000 damage depending on boss you're facing, building up frost, and doing the stance damage, it's just amazing and can help you through various situations and challenges in Elden Ring. It really is incredible. If you never tried this out, the Sword Spear is perfect for this. You could also go with the Clayman's Harpoon, but you get more AR from the Sword Spear, which then will net you more damage on Ice Spear, especially if you have the right stats. If you're running it keen, you're going to go for Dexterity. If you're running it in cold, you're going to go Intelligence and Dexterity. And then if you're running it in Magic, you're going to go for Magic with a little bit of Dexterity. It's honestly just an amazing Ash of War, even on the Shadow Tree Avatar. And by the way, I've mentioned this before, but those that don't know or aren't up on the current pronunciation, it is Shadow Tree. I know for the longest time we were calling it Scatter Tree, but it's in a different language, and the proper pronunciation, I believe, is Shadow Tree Avatar. 
And of course, this is always a long fight with three phases. This tree, I believe, actually ended up appearing twice in this video. It's a challenging boss for a lot of people. It does good holy and physical damage. The only advantage you have against the Shadow Tree Avatar, though, is that he's relatively slow. Oh, and if you use fire, he takes an additional 40% damage, so there's that too, which is a testament to Ice Spear because he doesn't, I think he has either some or zero magic resistance, but he doesn't take additional magic damage as far as I know. Fire is still the best thing against him, and Ice Spear still does very good damage. And, of course, he's going to go into his last phase now. By the way, if you critically break him in the first two phases, he'll start with less HP in the next phases. So that's incredibly helpful to do, and I highly recommend it. Also, try to get hit him in the head as much as you can, because the more you hit him in the head, the more damage you're going to do. And if you get a Frost proc in there, you can get massive damage, and down goes the Shadow Tree Avatar. And we're going to go over the Ice Spear build, equipment, everything you need to know here in a second. This is definitely one I recommend trying out. My favorite Ash of War in the game for the most part. And the Guardian Sword Spear is awesome too. It's jumping equipment. We have the Guardian Sword Spear and Keen Affinity with Ice Spear. We have any Silver buffs. We have the Rakshasa set on. We have Ritual Sword, Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm. We have the Shard of Alexander. We're running Dragon Crest, Great Shield, Talisman. Highly recommend this Talisman in DLC. Magic tier, Faith tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance, 17 Strength, 65 Dexterity, 23 Faith, which is 33 Faith with the Faith here in case you want to use Hal. But I recommend in DLC to use Golden Vow, Blessing Spoon, and then Black Flames Protection for the extra defense. And number seven, Death Poker makes the cut. Because it's Ash of War, Ghost Flame Ignition is as cool and powerful as it sounds. This does massive magic and frost damage and can easily hit for up to 20,000 damage with just a few buffs. It's fun to use too, and certainly belongs right here on the list. Even if it's a bit slow, you can get away from the boss while the Ash or Frost Trail builds up Frost and damage at a very fast speed. And yeah, you have two options with this Ash of War, which is incredible by the way. You could either do the Explosion, which is going to be right trigger or R2, or you can do the Frost Trail, which I like. I prefer that one more, and that's going to be R1 or RB. It builds up a ton of Frost and does massive magic damage, especially when using Terra Magica. Let's jump into equipment here in a second. Stats everything you need to know this is a fun one to use that does a lot of damage definitely recommend this one too a lot of the ones in here now that we're into are really great we have death poker plus 10 any staff for terror magic any seal for buffs rock shasta set and spellblade set we have melissa's prosthesis magic scorpion charm shard of alexander we have the ritual sword talisman we have the magic tier faith tier and that's moog shackle by the way if you didn't know the item that stuns moog let's jump into stats and we have 50 Vigor, 22 Mind, 20 Endurance. We have 16 Strength, 17 Dexterity. We have 75 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith here. Golden Vow, Blessing Spoon, Hallow Shabriri, and then Terra Magic is highly recommended for even more damage. And number six, Guts Greatsword with Classic Lion's Claw is still good and reliable. This combo has been used since Elden Ring's released and for great reasons. It's fantastic for poise damage and has unbelievable hyper armor. Lion's Claw is still better in terms of DPS and poise damage than Savage Lion's Claw, and this goes perfectly with Guts Greatsword for massive damage in heavy or fire affinity. By the way, if you want to run this in Flame Art, that's another alternative for Faith builds. You'll get massive base damage. You only get a D in Faith Scaling, but the base damage is huge. Same thing with Sacred Affinity, and Sacred Affinity may be a great option for DLC because Holy is amazing in DLC. In a second here, we're going to go over equipment, stats, everything you need to know. And for equipment, we have Fire, Guts, Greatsword, Guts, Greatsword, Fire, Fiddy, any seal for buffs. You can check out the armor set there. Ritual Sword, Salespin, Fire, Scorpion, Charm, Shard of Alexander, Urtree's favorite, plus two, Flame Tier, Fate Tier. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 66 Strike we should have, so it's 99 when we two-hand this, 25 Faith with the Fate Tier, and for buffs, Golden Vow and Flame Grimmer Strength as well. At number five, we have my favorite new weapon on this list, Euporia. This weapon is literally fun to use while also being great in DLC. Holy is really good in Shadow of the Earth Tree, and this is exactly where this weapon shines. I recommend picking this one up for sure, even if it's a bit out of the way. You'll have the versatility of a faith build and the power of a god. This is one you need to try. Euporia really is quite a good weapon. After the buff it received in 1.13, it's honestly one of the best weapons in the game. It's incredible to use, and for me, it's also a ton of fun. The beam is absolutely insane, can stack up a ton of damage, and the regular hits, including successive attacks and the charge attacks on it are impressive too, are incredible. It honestly makes for one of the best weapons. Let's jump into equipment. And we have Yaporia plus 10. We have any seal for buffs. I went for a light equipment load here. You don't need to do that though. You could hit 51 poise with this endurance if you want to go for 51 poise and some defense. We have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Sacred Scorpion Charm, Melissa's Prosthesis, 
Shard of Alexander to boost the beam, and then we have the Holy Tear and Thorny Tear as well. Let's jump into stats. And for stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, we have 16 Strength, 21 Dexterity. You only need 16, but we have Melissa's Prosthesis. We have 28 Endurance, so enough for 51 points, 70 Faith. We're using Golden Vow, Blessings of the Earth Tree, and then Black Flames Protection for some extra defense and DLC. And number four, we have Night Comet. There's actually not a ton to state here. It does massive magic damage and is boosted by up to 60% with two Staves of Loss. It's phenomenal. And more importantly, it has incredible range and the input isn't recognized by NPCs and bosses. This can be used to great effect against bosses like Melania and Radagon, who would otherwise block or dodge ranged attacks. Try Night Comet if you're ever looking for an easier time. If there's only one downside, it's probably that it does go through FP relatively quick and it's hard to fully optimize at rune level 150. Even so, the damage is incredible. Yeah, and if you use Terra Magic with this and you charge it, you're looking at massive damage between 5 and 10,000. It's going to be somewhere in that range for each hit. If you hit this dragon's head, it could actually be up to 10, between 8 and 10. we got 7,900 as the buffs start to wear down, but if you use Hal, it's going to be closer to 10. On regular enemies, it's mostly going to hit for between 4 and 6 and up to 8. It really is just incredible. There's so much damage that you get out of Night Comet. Let's jump into equipment. And we have two Staves of Lost plus 25. You could use any seal for buffs, even if it's one you don't have the requirements for, so I went for lightweight. Rakshasa Set, Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm. We have the Ritual Swords Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman, and then we have the Magic Tier and Faith Tier 2. Let's jump into stats. And for stats for this build, we are going to have 50 Vigor for this one, 22 Mind, 20 Endurance, 75 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith Tier, so we can use Golden Vow, Hal the Shabiri, Terra Magicka, of course, for our buffs, and then we are using Night Comet. Number three is the Gargoyle Twin Blades. Awesome weapons for bleed buildup. Out of all the Twin Blades I've tested throughout my time in Elden Ring, the two best seem to be the Gargoyle Twin Blades and Godskin Peelers, with the Gargoyles being the best one. The bleed buildup is very good and the damage is great. It is a jump bleed build, so that may be boring for some, but this is as tried and true as it gets. If you're stuck on any bosses, any of the top four can get you out in a pinch, no question. This is a simple build too that is quite easy to use. I'm going to show a clip from another video of Radon with a single twin blade. It's going to be quick, though. I'm just going to show phase two. We have two gargoyle twin blades for our jump attack bleed build. Blood affinity with Seppuku. Part of Rakshasa set. White mass, raptors, black feathers, any seal for buffs. Claw talisman, Lord of Blood's exaltation. Rotten wing sword insignia, Melissa's prosthesis, thorny tier, and faith tier. And for stats on this build, we have 60 Vigor, 17 Mind, 30 Endurance, 40 Strength. We have 45 Arcane, 25 Faith with the Faith here. And then we're going to be using Golden Vow and Flame Gripping Strength for our buffs. This is really great in terms of DPS and bleed buildup. So if you saw my top 12, you probably noticed I used a couple clips from that video. This was kind of a year in review video, just like the last one was in the sense of going over everything post DLC in a finalized ranking. Anyways, I was able to take Radon down on New Game Plus 7 with a single Gargoyle Twin Blade, which may be a better suited build for him. If you're struggling with your Jump Attack Bleed build, switch to a single Twin Blade, put Dragon Crest in place of the Claw Talisman, get yourself some good armor, and go for successive hits with quick attacks and bleed build up with a single Twin Blade. You'll get around 60 strength too when you're two-handing with the same stats. The only boss I have left, by the way, in terms of DLC Plus, because I ran through once and ran through another time on the same character. We're on Journey 38 and 39, by the way, I'll show that at the end of the video. Is going to be Radon on DLC Plus. I'm going to try to parry him, so I'll probably post that on my other channel sometime soon. At number two, we have the Scavenger Curve Swords, a godly weapon at rune level 125 to 150. If you're keeping 60 Vigor, which I highly recommend unless you're a caster, then up to 150, the Scavengers are your best bet. Less bleed than Twin Blades? Yep, but bleed resistance goes up with each proc, meaning bosses are harder to proc bleed as the fight goes on. The damage in between procs is relative and generally can only go up as time goes on with successive attack damage. This makes the Scavs the smartest choice in my opinion for insane physical damage in between procs at lower rune levels. Once you're past 150, closer to 200, they get beat out by the Gargoyles Twin Blades, Beastman Curve Swords, and at max level, the Bandit Curve Swords have the highest AR in Blood Affinity. I get asked that question a lot, why they're better than other bleed builds. It's the damage in between procs. If bleed starts at 300, then it's 300 to proc, 500, 700, etc. So the damage in between procs becomes incredibly important. Let's jump into equipment and stats. 
For equipment, we have two scavenger curve swords on a colt with seppuku. We have Eddie seal for buffs. The dragon communion seal would fit well here. We have the white mask, raptor's black feathers, and then we have part of the rakshasa set on. We have the rotten wing sword insignia, lord of blood's exaltation, Melissa's prosthesis. We have the claw talisman. Then we have the authority tier, faith tier. Let's jump into stats for the scavenger build. And for the stats here, we have 60 Vigor, 15 Mind, 27 Endurance. We have 75 Arcane for a lot of DPS, 25 Faith with a Faith tier, Golden Valve, Blessing Spoon, and Flame Grave of Strength. At number one, well, you know, the Blasphemous Blade didn't move. Only one weapon could be nerfed, gain one Talisman after, and somehow be the best it's ever been. The Blasphemous Blade is easy mode, and many players consider it a cheese to beat the game with it. For me, I think it's incredibly helpful for any player struggling and is my number one recommended build for those that are. This weapon's ash, Taker's Flames, heals you with each hit while doing massive fire damage. You also rarely have to use healing flash. Fights will be fairly short and you could trade with some boss hits while using this ash. There's honestly not much better than this. It's incredibly convenient and could save you time after time. The Blasphemous Blade is an incredible weapon. It truly is the best on this list, and it's going to forever for me be the best unless it has another massive nerf, and even then I feel like this weapon would survive it unless they nerf the healing, and I don't think they will. I think this weapon was meant to help players that were struggling. It's there for that. With that said, we're going to go over stats, equipment, everything you need to know soon, and then at the end of this video, after I show the journeys that we're on, I'm going to talk about some things about the future of the channel and whatnot for those that are curious, but first, we got to jump into equipment and stats for this one. And for equipment, we have the Blasphemous Blade plus 10. We're using the Earth Tree Seal. We have the Rakshasa set on here, of course, for extra damage. We have the Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Shard, Talisman of the Dread, which boosts the Ash of War, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Flame Tier, and Faith Tier. For the best Blasphemous Blade build in Elden Ring, we have 60 Vigor, 25 Mind, 29 Endurance, 22 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 70 Faith. We have Golden Vow, Blessings of the Earth Tree, and then Black Flames Protection. Or if you're feeling more dangerous, you could use Howlish Shabriri for extra damage, but I like the defense here. And the journeys that we were on were 38 and 39 total for this video. We were cross journey 38 and 39, New Game Plus 7, with some New Game Plus 7 and DLC Plus. Those are the journeys the character Banished is on. Thanks for watching this one. I hope everyone enjoyed me doing my ranked and revamped top 20 most broken builds in Elden Ring. From here on out, we'll be switching to Elden Ring once a week, focusing mainly on fun and new builds while doing at least one video a week on other games as well. I'm glad we've had so much fun with Elden Ring, but eventually it is time to start getting into other games, even if Elden Ring is my favorite game of all time. With that said, thanks for tuning in and hopefully I'll catch you all in my next video. Have a great week.